Hi, this is Kate, and this is the first video for week 6 of Math 23. Let's continue our discussion about sequences. We open with monotone sequences. Before we get to exactly what monotone sequences are, let's talk a little bit about some other terms. First is increasing. The adjective increasing when used to describe a sequence is when each successive term is greater than or equal to the term that comes before it. Greater than or equal to. And then that's true for all pairs of uh, consecutive terms. Now when we use the term strictly increasing, that means that the very next term is greater than the term that comes before it, not greater than or equal to, greater than. Similarly, a sequence is considered a decreasing sequence if the very next term is less than or equal to the term that comes before it. That's true for all pairs of consecutive terms. And a sequence is strictly decreasing if the next term or following term is less than the term that comes before it. That, that's true through all the pairs of consecutive terms for the sequence. So knowing that there can be equality between consecutive terms for increasing and decreasing sequences, that's what differ, differentiates them from strictly increasing and strictly decreasing sequences. A sequence that is either increasing or decreasing is called a monotone sequence. So for a monotone sequence, you won't see fluctuation where the terms maybe increase and then decrease and then increase. A monotone sequence is either increasing or decreasing. Some facts that are certainly uh, proven in Ross, our textbook, are that all bounded monotone sequences converge. Another is that for an unbounded increasing sequence, the limit of the sequence is positive infinity. And for an unbounded decreasing sequence, the limit of the sequence is negative infinity. Now, let's grow our vocabulary some more. A lot of the time when we're talking about sequences, sometimes we're talking about the set of all the values in the sequence, and the next few terms are talking about the set of all the values of the sequence. So the supremum of a subset, S, which is a subset of some set T, is the least element of T that is greater than or equal to all of the elements that are in the subset S. So when we're talking about the supremum of a subset, sometimes that value is part of the subset. Sometimes it's part of the larger set of which S is a subset of. What's an example of this? Let's consider the set of rational numbers. Now, let's consider the subset of rationals enumerated as such. Now, when we think about what the supremum of this subset S is, it's clear that the element of T that is greater than or equal to all of the elements in here is going to be 1. Even though S is an infinite subset, it's clear that the limit of this sequence is 1, so its supremum is 1. But note that the supremum itself is not a member of S. The supremum is a member of T. So there are frequently times where it may very well belong in S, but most of the time you'll see that it's quite common to have the supremum be an element of an outside set, not the actual set of elements that are part of the sequence. Also, the supremum of a sequence is called the least upper bound of its set of elements. The maximum is the largest value attained within a set or sequence. And here's another great example. This is, it says it's easy to find the examples of sets or sequences for which no supremum exists or for which a supremum exists but a maximum does not. This is one example where a supremum exists but a maximum does not, because a maximum actually must be achieved. And supremum is our least upper bound, but maximum, one, one is never actually achieved by our subset S. Rather, uh, one is the supremum, but there is no maximum, because if you pick an actual value for a maximum, 
that is achieved in S, the very next term will be greater than it, and it's not a maximum. So that's a great, uh, this T and this S are a great example of a situation where there's certainly a supremum. It's not in S, it's in T, but there's no maximum. Similarly, uh, the infimum of a sequence is the greatest lower bound or the greatest element of T that is less than or equal to all of the elements that are in S. Similarly, it may not be a member of S, it may only be a member of T that happens. I challenge you to perhaps adopt something very similar to this construction to find an example where that happens. And note that it is not the same as a minimum, much in the way that supremum and maximum are not the same. A minimum must be achieved in S, whereas an infimum does not have to be achieved at all. So that is exactly the same. The infimum is the greatest lower bound. The minimum is the actually least, actually achieved least element of your subset. Another important type of sequence to know about uh, are Cauchy sequences. And this is certainly a definition that you should commit to memory. What exactly does it say? A sequence is a Cauchy sequence if, for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists some index, big N, such that for any two terms that come after that term in the index, their distance from each other will be less than epsilon. So that means if you give me some very, very small number, like one one hundredth, I can point to a place in that sequence, say, the 170th term. And what the significance of that number is, is that any two terms, any two beyond the 170th, maybe the 171st and the one millionth term, it doesn't matter how far apart they are as long as they're both past the 170th mark, they'll be within epsilon of each other. What's interesting is that both convergent and Cauchy sequences must be bounded. A convergent sequence of real numbers or of rational numbers is Cauchy. A Cauchy sequence of real numbers is convergent. That is proven in the text. And it's easy to invent a Cauchy sequence of rational numbers whose limit is an irrational number. I believe we'll be doing that in class. And as, it, as this note down here says, in quantum mechanics, we work in a Hilbert space, and one of the requirements uh, for a Hilbert space is that every Cauchy sequence is convergent. And optimization problems in economics are frequently also formulated in a Banach space, uh, which has the same requirement. This is something that you'll learn much more about if you decide to take Math 116, Convexity and Optimization Theory. I will point out in general that this particular proof right here, a convergent sequence of real numbers or of rationals is Cauchy, will be one of the proofs that you will be responsible for this week.